Welcome to another video. The video I made yesterday was from a page that contained um, a bunch of questions. And this was another question that I found interesting. The question is to find the sum of the first n terms of this series. So, for example, if we want to just consider the first let's say the first three terms, the sum of the first three terms. We can manually or um, singularly or separately, that's the word, compute each of them. So you have one times one factorial is one times one, that's one. Two times two factorial is two times two, that's four. And this is three times three factorial will be three times six, which is going to be 18 plus four plus one, which is going to be 23. So what we're saying is we're looking for a formula such that when we plug in three, because we use the first three terms, if we plug in three into it, we're going to get 23. That's the kind of formula we're looking for. And that's what we want. So that if I say what is the 50th, the sum of the first 50 terms, then you can just plug in 50 into that formula and you get the sum of all the terms up to the number 50. How do you do that? Well, let's get into the video. So whenever you have a sum task like this for an infinite series and you want to have a finite um, the sum of a finite number of terms, the first thing is you want to know what is the nth term. And this is obvious because you can see the first term is 1 times 1 factorial, second is 2 times 2 factorial, so the nth term is going to be n times n factorial. So we can just continue here and say this is plus n times n factorial. So that, that's exactly what we need. But the formula we're trying to compute is going to be, we want to find, we want to find, I remember that I used to write WTF for want to find, and it has a different meaning in this current world, so I have to write want to find in full. So um, we want to find the sum, starting from one, to n, the first n terms of this, we're going to say it is k times k factorial, okay? Now, this is not, this is just what we're looking for. We're looking for a formula that's going to give us the answer without us computing k times k factorial when k is 1, when k is 2, when k is 3. We just want to put n at once. So what can you do with this? And this is where it's a basic, simple problem. What can you do? If you remember yesterday's video, I was talking about you creating a, a telescoping series. Because you see, once you can generate a minus and you can have two separate terms, then you know that some terms will cancel each other out and the remaining terms will give you your final formula that you're looking for. So that's what you're going to do here. Now, you don't want to put the minus inside the factorial because it will get complicated. You want to put the minus here. So what can we do to k? You can say, notice that k times k factorial is the same thing as k Plus, now you can add a constant and subtract that same constant. That way it doesn't change k. Now what constant should you choose? 2 or 3 or 4? Always choose the easiest number to work with. Any number will work, but your work will be more complicated. So the easiest is 1. So I'm going to add 1 to k and immediately subtract 1. So nothing has changed and I'm going to multiply it by k factorial. So remember that the whole purpose of this is so that we can have a minus sign. Then we can have a telescoping series. So here we can write this as k plus 1 minus 1 times k factorial. So that when you distribute this, you're going to have k plus 1 times k factorial minus 
So we have k plus 1 times k factorial minus 1 times k factorial. Now you have created something that will give you a telescoping series if you take it back into this notation. If you look closely at this expression, it looks more complicated, but it is less complicated because this is k plus 1 times k factorial, which is k plus 1 factorial, right? So it means this is a lot easier than we were thinking. This is k plus 1 factorial minus k factorial. You see that? Now with this, it is easy for us to transform this and just have a telescoping series. This is a clear telescoping series. So we're going to say that, therefore, the sum from k equals 1 to n of, um, we got k times k factorial must be equal to k plus 1 must be equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of k plus 1 factorial minus k factorial. This is our telescoping series. Once you get a telescoping series, you're almost at the answer. Okay, so the only thing you needed to do that was new was you knowing that you had to find a minus sign somewhere. If there's no minus sign, you're stuck. Okay, so here we go. Now, what we have is we're going to say this is equal to, we now start plugging in numbers because with numbers plugged in, we're good. So let's plug in k equals 1. If k equals 1, this is going to be 2 factorial minus 1 factorial. Okay, so we're going to be having 2 factorial minus 1 factorial. Nice. Plus, the next one is going to be 3 factorial minus 2 factorial. Boom. We already see cancellations. We know this 2 factorial minus 2 factorial is going to become 0. Okay, let's go to the next one. Plus, the next is going to be 4 factorial minus 3 factorial. Okay, uh, close it. Plus, so here, this is going to take this out. This is going to take this out. Okay. So it looks like anything on the left has something in the future that it's going to take out. This three has got this guy to take out. This four has got somebody to take out in the future. As long as there's something in the future, the one on the left will take it out. But this guy has nobody to take out. So in your final answer, this guy stays. Negative 1 factorial remains. If we continue, everything on the left will take out somebody in the future. And you notice that every time you have a new cell, this guy is taken out by the previous guy on the left. So when we get all the way to the end, when it is n plus 1, n plus 1 factorial minus n factorial, see what's going to happen. This guy will be taken, off, taken out by the guy that was in this previous parenthesis, but this guy on the left will not have anybody in the future to take out because there is no future for n plus 1 factorial. So n plus 1 factorial stays, survives the onslaught. So this is going to be plus n plus 1 factorial. And that's it. So that means that this is equal to, let's put this forward. So we can say therefore, um, this series, the sum, from k equals 1 to n of k times k factorial will be equal to, if you put this forward, it's going to be n plus 1 factorial. Now, 1 factorial is just 1, minus 1. And this should be our final answer. Now, oof, terrible. Now we need to test and see if this is true. Let's um, say n equals 3. Now, 
What's three plus one? That's four. What is four factorial? Four factorial is 24. 24 minus one is 23. So this formula works. If you take the first two, your n is gonna be two, and the total you're supposed to get is five. If you plug in two here, what is two plus one? That's three. What's three factorial? Six. What's six minus one? Five. So the formula works. And this is it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.